You know this project's gonna be epic when you're starting with a piece of burl that's this big and this is your mold. So for this week's project, I'm gonna be testing out a new resin. Now it has a top secret formula and I've been told that this is the deepest casting resin that Australia's ever seen. Now this is my casting container, a 20 litre bucket. And by the time I put my burl in the bottom here, the resin portion is going to be about a foot tall. And once I've finished making the blank, I'm going to put it on the lathe, I'm going to turn it, I'm going to sand it, I'm going to polish it. We're going to put this resin through its paces. So make sure you stick around till the end and see if this works. But for now, we're going to get started on cutting this up. Look at the size of this thing. This will be the biggest blank I've ever used. Normally I'd stabilize the burl prior to casting, but because this one is so large, it doesn't fit in my vac chamber. So there's no way for me to stabilize it. So the next best thing is to coat it in resin. That way it'll seal it up and prevent any air escaping. This particular resin is mixed at a ratio of two to one by weight. So I'm just gonna use my bathroom scales. So we've got five and a half kilos of part A. So now we need a total weight of 8.25 kilos. Holy crap, that is a lot of resin. Now it's time to mix it up. This has to be the thinnest resin that I've ever used. It's almost like water. That's going to be really good in releasing these bubbles. Now because this blank is going to be similar to my universe eggs, I've gone ahead and dropped a couple of drops of blue alcohol ink and my signature Starry Night. So the next step will be to pour some into this 5 litre container and start degassing it in the vacuum chamber. I now have nearly 15 litres or four gallons worth of degassed resin. So the next thing I need to do is move this bench under the air conditioner because I'm not too sure what these temperatures are going to be like. So just to play it safe, I'll put it under the air con and then we'll start pouring. I think the best way to pour this resin in without creating more air is to run it down a stick. So I've got this metal mixing bar here. We're just going to use that. This could be a bit tricky to film. I may get in the way of the camera, but just bear with me. I do apologize about that. I couldn't, I just had to get in front of the camera. I felt like I was gonna drop it otherwise, but anyway, that's our first five liters. Let's put the next one in. I'm actually standing on a ladder to do this as well. So it's like one big balancing act.
Now I'm just going to give it a little stir to mix it all together. So I guess all we have to do now is wait. I'll put an extra fan up there under the aircon to keep it nice and cool. We've got our GoPro time lapse running. I think we'll be okay. I'll come back and check on it in a few hours. So it's now 20 past 11 at night. It's been nine hours since I did the initial mixing and five hours since we poured. It's looking pretty good. Nowhere near set yet. And as far as the heat goes, it feels maybe a bit slightly warmer than room temperature. So I'm off to bed now. We'll let this sit and we'll check on it in the morning. So that last clip you just saw, I filmed that over four weeks ago. Now let me explain to you why. So I went ahead and made a smaller one. Now this one's still a decent size. It was done in a 10 litre bucket, but I'll show you why I had to do it. So there was two main reasons why I had to make the smaller one as opposed to using this big one. The first one is the weight of this thing. It weighs 20 kilos. And I was just a bit worried about putting this on the lathe because I just don't know how well it would turn. And the second reason, I got some air bubbles. Now the main reason for that was because I was unable to stabilize this piece of burl. And that was the main reason for going for the smaller size. I was able to put this piece in the vac chamber and I actually had it stabilizing for two whole days and all the bubbles stopped. Now, unfortunately, I still got a couple in this one. Now, they definitely aren't as bad. There are a couple in there, but I feel way more confident putting this on the lathe and turning it up. Now, this big one won't go to waste. I do have a plan for that, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. For now, I'm gonna mount this on the lathe and hopefully it doesn't fly off and take my head off. So before we start turning this monster, I want you to go down in the comments section and let me know what you think will happen. Do you think it's going to stay on? Do you think it's going to fly off? What do you reckon? I'll definitely have my face shield on, but I just don't know. It's so big. Hopefully it'll be alright. There is one more thing I forgot to mention. Before attempting to turn this, I did check to see how hard the resin was. Now you can do that with a shore meter. You just turn it on and push the pin all the way down and it'll give you a reading on the front here. Ideally, you wanna be at least over 75 shore D before turning. So you can see here we're at 78. Now because I've never turned a piece this large on the lathe before, I'm not too sure about what speed I'm going to use. I'm probably going to start off around the 250 mark, maybe 300. We'll see how we go. I'll probably let the piece determine my speed, but once we true it up, we'll definitely be able to turn it up a bit more.
So what you guys just saw in those last few minutes took me nearly four hours to do. This thing really kicked my butt, but look at the size of this thing. It's amazing. And it really makes me think, what am I going to do with this? Let me know what you would do. I know some of you guys are probably thinking, why don't you make a smaller blank? That way you wouldn't have to turn off so much. Well the point in this video was to push this resin to the limits and see how far we could go in one single pour. Now I think we did that and it turned out pretty good. Now the next test will be how well does it polish up. So I'm going to take this now, give it a sand, give it a polish and we'll see how it looks. Reminds me of a big balloon. I dare say this is going to take me a couple of hours. So I'll keep this bit nice and short so I don't bore you guys. Before I show you this incredible piece, I want to show you something else that I made. I wanted to test this resin out without it being compromised by any air caused from the burl inside. So this piece here is 10 inches tall and 4 inches wide. And I did this one in the pressure pot. And as you can see, this one turned out crystal clear. So it's good to know that once I sort the air coming out of the burl, I'm going to be able to get a crystal clear casting. Now as for this massive piece, I was thinking about hand carving it into a cool shape, but if you guys can think of something else, let me know. Besides getting these bubbles inside, we also got something else. We got two little bugs trapped in there. Reminds me very much of Jurassic Park. Well guys, what did you think of that one? I actually didn't mind the bubbles in the end. I think it really added to the underwater feel and I think it suited the piece. Now as for the resin, I think it actually performed quite well. And if you guys want to try it for yourself, keep an eye out on Just Resin's website for when it becomes available. Well that's all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.